Hi, welcome. Uh, we're going to continue with the fifth lecture. So this is second order Newton's method. So we discussed already about green design and different ways of, of performing it and how to select uh, our different optimizers. So now we're going to continue with um, a different way to approximate these steps. So instead of just using the first order information, we're going to use <clears throat> second order information. So basically we want to use the Hessian and that's why we were computing that before. So as you remember, our parameter update is just taking the previous step and then updating it using the sum learning rate times the gradient, right? In this case, <clears throat> we are going to add the Haitian and we are going to add the second order information. So basically this is just um, derivation that comes from using the second order uh, Taylor series. So we can just approximate any function, right? F uh, of theta using a Taylor series approximation. This just adds the second derivative on top of the on top of the approximation. So it is the function value at some particular point k, and then we have this gradient transpose um, theta minus theta k. And this, this was the, the first order that we had before, right? And now we can just add on top of this, the second order information that is the square. Remember like this is just matrix form. So this is the square of the difference in theta with respect to that particular point. And <clears throat> if we just group these things together, this is equivalent to just saying that I have a second order function on theta plus my first order times on theta plus some constant. And this A and B is just the expansion of this thing here. And basically they just become A is one half of uh, my Haitian information. So this is the only second order, right? So when I do this multiplication, everything that ends up with these uh, theta's over here. And then B is my GK minus HK theta K. So again, I'm just going to expand these and then just group and everything else is going to get into the C. But since we're going to do the derivative of this, we don't need to, to actually compute those, but you can you can do the expansion and see what, what the whole shape is. So now if I do the derivative of this with respect of my, of my theta, right? I end up with uh, the derivative of this part over here. So this is going to be uh, twice this matrix time theta. And still, if you don't remember these, you can go and check in the matrix cookbook and they have these recipes for you to, to just use them in case you don't remember. And then I can just compute the derivative of these. So, and since we want to obtain the, the optimal parameter theta, we just do this derivative equal to zero. And this is then equal to just solving these for theta, right? So I just pass this B in the other side and then multiply by the, by the inverse. Uh, through the left. So this is minus uh, one half of A inverse B, right? And now I can just plug what my, my definition of A was, right? And then I will have that this is minus one half and this is the inverse of this. So it, it should be twice H inverse K times B. But what was B, right? Like my B is defined as D. So times my GK minus HK theta k. Now I can I can solve, so I cancel these twos over here. And I just multiply these. So this is hk inverse gk. And this hk cancel. So I just have the plus theta k over here. And this this definition, this is my, my optimum, right? Like this is the best solution that I have. So that is why we are using this way of optimizing through this uh, uh, learning rate. So it comes from the optimum solution of the uh, series, the Taylor series expansion. Okay. Um, and this is the vanilla uh, second order method. We can also do some quasi Newton. That is uh, um, another version of this. So it is just an approximation. 
and it is called the BFGS, the BFGS method. Because this is from the author, so this is Broiden, Fletch, uh, Goldfarb, and Shannon. Okay, so the BFGS method. And what they said is instead of computing that hash and let's let's approximate it because it is it is hard to to do that that second derivative. So let's let's use this BK matrix as an approximation. And that BK is actually a simple a simple way of computing this. Uh, this Hessian through some some approximation and do it iteratively. So our next step of this matrix is going to be our first one. And I'm just going to iterate over these, right? So what I'm going to add is just the YK, YK transpose and YK transpose my diagonal matrix minus uh, BKSK times BKSK transpose. So just the second order, right? To get this over here. And the SK uh, transpose BK, sorry, BK uh, SK. And this SK is just defined as the, the difference between the, the theta's. So this is my, my parameter, how my parameter is changing. And my YK is defined how my, my gradient is changing. So what I'm doing is just computing a, a second order of, of the change in the in the parameters and how the rate of the change in the gradient with respect to the change in the in the parameters behave. And then I just do the second order of the same thing, right? And these end up as um, as a matrix plus a diagonal matrix because if you expand these over here, you will end up with something like my BK is some some matrix, right? And these YK and YK transpose is just a vector times a row vector, right? Over a row vector and a column vector. So this over here, it's um, a diagonal diagonal matrix. While this over here is just a scalar, right? And then we have something similar in the other side. We have again my my matrix over here times a column vector times this matrix times a column vector over here transpose. And this is just one row vector, my matrix, and some column vector, right? So I'm just kind of replacing these shapes over here. And so let, let's just kind of do this. So these end up as a diagonal matrix, right? These end up as a scalar. And similarly, uh, this over here is just a, a column vector, right? And this is just the transpose of that. So this well, it will end up as a, as a row vector. And this is just a scalar because this is just the, the second form. So as you see, I end up with the same shape as, as I had before. So I am just subtracting two diagonal matrix and then adding it that to the to the original block. So that is the shape of, of the approximation and I and it is a, a much easier result than just going through the uh, the whole approximation of the of the Haitian. And just to finish this section, uh, we can also talk about the L2 regularization of these of this method. So basically when you have the L2 regularization, what we have here is that we want to find that the we want to find out that the the maximum likelihood estimation is basically uh, just the L infinity of, uh, of of my norm, right? So this maximum likelihood is is just taking the norm of my gradient and and just pushing that to, to infinity. So if I have some, some step function, I, I, I would get these, this identity that the, the indicator function that WT uh, X is much greater than, than WC. So I just get a steep function over here that, that, uh, that, 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 that makes this, uh, this work. So instead of computing that, what we want to do is uh, 
we want to compute the, the maximum posteriority, right? And my maximum posteriority then introduces some regularization. And if you remember, this and like if we just call it f bar, this is just the negative likelihood of my of my distribution, right? And then this just adds some regularization with respect of the of of the parameter. So this is the L2 regularization that was introduced uh, by this uh, map function. And when we take the gradient of this, I just want to take the derivative of this particular thing here, right? So my my derivative of the, the negative log likelihood as we were talking before, this is just the gradient plus twice the L of 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 W, right? So the the lambda of W. And this is again just regularizing my gradient is also adding this regularization term over here that you saw also. And if I do the H and I will see a similar a similar thing, right? Like the derivative of this is just the H and of W that we had before. And then I'm just going to add some identity and the learning rate to that, that particular thing. So when you are working with, uh, even with regularized uh, forms of your loss function, you're going to also introduce these, this information over here that also helps you to, to improve uh, the overall gradient, okay? So that's it for these uh, second order ideas, and we're going to go back in the next part.